Steve Carter never knew much about his birth story after being adopted at the age of four from an orphanage in Hawaii. Steve had little reason to ever search for his biological parents. We moved from Hawaii to Tennessee and then New Jersey when I was in the third grade and didn't really think much about my adoption. But when he saw a story about a woman who discovered she'd been abducted as a child, Steve was triggered to learn more about his own past. On a whim, Steve searched Hawaii, male, missing 34 years, and was stunned by what he found. The first person that came up, the image looked very much like me. What followed next was a year of piecing together a puzzling timeline of his own past. This is an incredible story. Steve joins us from his home in Medford Lakes, New Jersey. Uh, Steve, I, I, you know, just when you think you've seen or heard everything, I then hear about your story, and I cannot believe it. Your story, you solved one of the longest missing child cases in the United States history, and you were the missing child. That is, that is stunning. <laughs> What was it about the news story that made you wonder about your biological family? Um, my wife and I had started to talk about having kids. And, you know, when you, every doctor's appointment growing up, I'd go to the doctor and they'd ask me questions about uh, my medical history, you know, family members, and it was always a blank. And I didn't really have any, you know, any idea of what happened. I was adopted. I mean, I was put in an orphanage at six months and was adopted at four. So, you know, I knew I was adopted. Um, it was just a, a process of, you know, what I'd like to find out before we had kids. And uh, Carlina's story came up, I think, five or six times that day. And it was just like, you know, there's a reason this is happening. So at lunch, I shut my office door and did the search. And you, you go online, you do the search, and you get your first, your first shocker in all of this, I think. Um, yes. Do, do you have the... This, this can't be real moment. I mean, it, it just, I, I'm trying to understand how this must feel. It, it was a little uh, surreal. Um, and, uh, you know, you start reaching out to your friends and everybody's on Gchat or whatever communicator they were using at the time. And I'm sending pictures and I'm saying, hey, who does this look like? And everybody's like, oh my God, that's you. Mm. And I was like, right? Um, so oh, right. Was, uh, I love the, I love the reaction, right? I mean, listen. You found out you had 10 names, three birth certificates, two birthdays. How did you weave through all of these complicating details? Uh, it was, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that it happened uh, at an age where I was, uh, you know, uh, kind of mature enough to deal with it uh, because it definitely was a lot. Um, you know, having a whole past that, uh, was unknown to you and then trying to wrap your head around having family members not only on my mother's side but on my father's side uh, and people that who were looking for me for you know 33 years um, it was a lot and uh, and then finding out all the names mm -hmm. just added to it your biological father mark um, he asked about your your mom he had no idea that you were put up for adoption I'm still trying to connect here the dots what happened to you? Um, it's nobody really knows. Uh, I went for a walk with my mother when I was six months. Uh, my stroller was found at a bus stop, uh, in Haula. And, uh, the next time I turn up is about two days later with an individual in a town outside of, um, Honolulu. Uh, and I was put into child protective services. Uh, the individual was put into the psychiatric ward of the hospital and I was, Listed as Tenzin Amai, uh, I was a native Hawaiian, and my birthday was a day before my actual birthday. So this was random. Is this how police describe it? Was it a random <clears throat> abduction? How How is it described? Nobody really knows. Uh, you know, there's been theories that my mother took me and put me in uh, into Child Protective Services. There's theories that it was another woman. Um, nobody really knows how it happened. So when you look um, back at it all, I mean, as I said, your biological father, Mark, did not know that you had been put up for adoption, you were raised, you are. How do you describe your family structure now? I, I don't think a lot has changed. Uh, you know, uh, Steve and Pat Carter are my parents. Uh, you know, they're my, my children's grandparents. Uh, they're their Mimi and Poppy. Um, you know, I talk to my sisters, I talk to my dad, um, but, you know, 
Oddly enough, I look <laughs> almost exactly uh, like my parents. Um, and uh, it's funny, you know, when we had kids, you know, my mom sees my youngest and is like, oh, my gosh, look, you know, I think Maddie has my freckles. And I have to remind my mom that, uh, you know, I'm adopted. So she definitely doesn't have your freckles, but uh, she's got freckles. Wow. It is an incredible story. As I said, I mean, let this soak in the longest missing child case in U.S. history. And it is his story. And he solved it. I'm ready for the TV movie. That's all I have to say, <laughs> Steve. Thank you so much. And I'm so happy Thank that you. you were able to find your family. They were able to find you. And this beautiful story, uh, when people are looking for some hope, they can look to your life as that. Thank you. Thank you.